Amen. Felicidades. Is that how they say it in Espanol? Si? Or no? Si. You guys got your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Get them in hand. Father, we pray that you deliver your word to us tonight. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20. I just wanted to give a quick exhortation from the word of God. I just got so blessed in reading this and I said that's for our church on our birthday. Psalm chapter 20, King David, many people believe, is about ready to head into battle. And you know, we've fought many battles to get to the point where we're at. And I don't believe that that's over. I believe that the greatest battles are ahead of us because the greatest victories are ahead of us. And so tonight I wanted to read you what I believe that King David was saying and declaring and what the priests were proclaiming as the people prepared to go out into battle. And may this be our cry, may this be something that we all receive tonight. So prepare your heart to receive this word because God wants to speak this over your life. He wants to speak this over your family. God wants to speak this into your business. God wants to speak this into your church. He wants to speak this word into your life. Psalm chapter 20 starts out and says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob defend you. Very interesting that he doesn't say the God of Israel. We would think God of Israel because Israel, right, that was after he changed his name. That was after he got the blessing. That that was the the one who the nation is named after. He had the, the 12 sons. That's the man that God should be naming himself after. And yet God takes on the name the God of Jacob. Why? Because Jacob went through trials. Jacob went through struggles. And our God is a God who delights in taking people who didn't have anything and didn't deserve anything and raising them up out of the rubble and restoring them and healing them and blessing them and making those messes into messages, taking our tests and our trials and turning them into our testimonies. And that's why God delights in this name, the God of Jacob. Because God is saying something to us. He's saying, you might be in the midst of trouble. Maybe tonight you came to a party because you said, you know what, I don't have anywhere else to go, and you know what, the church is celebrating, and even though I don't feel that happy, I just need to get close to God in the midst of all this trial. I've got good news for you. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Verse number two, may he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. See, you're not going to find help out there in the world. You're not going to find help out there. You might find some people who can empathize. You might find some people who are sympathetic towards your cause. You might find some people who maybe will even bless you for a period of time. But that's not true help. See, help like that lasts for a season. People will do it for so long. And yet, the true help that you need, the sustaining help, the the strengthening help is going to come from God himself, from the throne room of heaven. The Bible says, let us boldly enter into the throne room to find grace and mercy to help in a time of need. And so we can find that God will send his help, and not only out of the sanctuary, but out of Zion. That's the hill where Jerusalem was set up on. That was the place. And now present-day Zion is the church of the Almighty God. So you're going to find help, you're going to find strength, and you're going to find the things that you need as you come into the house of God and have a relationship with God and with his people. Oftentimes, God will use the people that surround you, people you don't even know, people sitting in these seats to encourage you, to bless you, to build you, and to do great and mighty things in your life. I have a quick testimony that I want to show you. Check out the overheads for James and Deborah and watch how God sent them help out of the church. March of last year, I... Um, experienced the, an onset of pneumonia, you know, in the hospital for, for a total of about eight weeks over a four-month period. My wife, Deborah, uh, while she was taking care of me, she had too many strokes. I know when you were sick in the hospital and it just seemed like there was no hope. I always knew there was hope mm-hmm. because our hope is in Jesus Christ. Yes. And regardless of what it says in the natural <clears throat> Regardless what the doctors were saying, we were standing on what God's word said. And we believed, like our pastors taught us, yeah. that I will live, I will not die. Yes. And only it's, it's, it's uh, bewildering when you get sick and not knowing, uh, uh, you know, each day was a, it's a different situation and seems things are getting worse and worse every day and things are not improving. Both times the rock was there. Right. Interceding in prayer and uplifting us. 
yes. and giving us hope. We believe, totally believe that God's a healer. Yes. He heals. He heals and restores. Because he uh, healed us. He healed us. The Rock Church was there for us. They uh, supported us in every way. Uh, our physical needs were met. They sent us cards and they fed uh, us. Provided, provided food for us. Because we weren't able to cook. We, we just were so thankful and grateful to be part of this great ministry. Mm -hmm. James and Deborah's testimony is one of thousands here at this church. And you know, some of you in this place have received help in the day of trouble because God sent help from the sanctuary. He sent it out of Zion. Next verse is pretty interesting. It says, and may he remember all of your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Isn't that a neat verse after freedom for our future as we conclude and as we celebrate what we've done? May he remember. See, the Bible says those who have sown with tears shall reap with shouts of joy. And I believe over these past three years, there have been some people who have held back, who have held off. Some of you guys, you gave till it hurt, and then you continued to give even after that. Some of you guys put off things, and, and you waited things out. And some of you guys said, you know what, I'm going to deny the flesh. I'm, I'm not going to buy the, the four bucks coffee anymore. And some of you guys did some things. You sold some things that were precious to you. But you said, you know what, I'm not bound by things. I am bound to my Lord and Savior. And you have shown, and may now God remember those offerings, and may he remember those sacrifices. Crisis. It goes on in the next verse, and it says, We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, see, those banners are not banners of victory yet. Those banners are standards under which they were going to go out for war. And it goes on, and it says in verse 6, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Now, obviously, there can be a messianic interpretation of this, that God saw Jesus there and did not leave his soul in hell like the Bible says, but raised him up from the grave. But as well, did you know that the anointed of the Lord now on the earth is the church of Almighty God? Because the, the head is anointed, Jesus, the Messiah, but now we are the body of Christ here on the earth. And the Bible says, may the Lord save his anointed. That means God is looking after your life. That means that God is watching over your every step. That means that God is going to watch out and he's going to remember your prayers and your petitions and your sacrifices and your offerings. And God is not unjust, the Bible says, to forget your labor of love and, and your work in hope. And God will sustain you. He will lift you up. He will uphold you. He will bless you. He will take care of you. God has your future in his hand. It is secure in the Almighty. says in verse number seven, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. I want to share with you one more testimony of a couple that called on the name of the Lord in their time of trouble, and God answered them. Check this out. I found out when I was 21 that I couldn't have babies due to PCOS. And staying strong, believing in God, now we have this little miracle here. And when the time came for my wife to take maternity leave, our income in our house was cut in half. Uh, we were stuck in a season of what do we do? So we started seeking the Lord. It came to the point where we were contemplating, do we leave our house and seek something cheaper or do we just stand firm and, and trust in God? And we just decided to stand our ground and trust in God and, and believe that He was going to come through for us. So as we're winding down to this finish line of finishing strong, uh, He surprised us with this check in the mail. It came from a class action lawsuit from a company I hadn't worked for since 2009. Instantly, right when we decided to pray about it, the first thing that came to my heart was freedom for our future. And when I spoke with my wife, she was laughing because that was the first thing that came to her heart when I got home. So the first thing we did once the check cleared, we paid off our freedom for our future. And since then, we've seen God like continue to bless us. My wife just started back to work not too long ago, and she's getting lots of job offers. And it's just been a tremendous blessing. I love the heart. This church for 28 years has loved people to life. It's been an anchor for those 
who have drifted. It's been a place of hope and healing and restoration. And I have one more testimony I want to share with you. I got this testimony about six months ago. And it's from someone in our church named Sherry. And it says, to my new family at The Rock, I'm so grateful for every one of you, and I love you so much. I've been at The Rock for about a year and a half, and I rededicated my life to the Lord on Father's Day one and a half years ago. So that'd be really two years ago now. I've been sitting on this for a while. Before that, I'd been in bed for seven years, and I had a bad heart, and I was slowly dying. I was on drugs for about 30 years. I got saved about 21 years ago, but really didn't have a church, and I was not connected to believers. So I fell back into my old ways after trying to serve the Lord for about six years. When I rededicated my life to God one and a half years ago, I quit drugs, drinking, smoking, cussing, sex, anger, unforgiveness, and so on and so on. Anybody can identify with that? Praise the Lord. Years ago, I went through about 16 rehabilitation programs. Of course, none worked. But one and a half years ago, it was Jesus alone who set me free, and I was ready. God sent me to The Rock, and I am so grateful he did. I looked around at the other churches, but when I came to The Rock, I knew I was home. Since then, God has completely healed my heart. He not only healed it, but gave me a new heart. I went to my cardiologist, and he told me, you have a perfectly normal heart. No more heart troubles. She goes on, it took me three months to walk again be before I could not take three steps without almost passing out. Now I can walk, and it's getting better every day. I gained 150 pounds being in bed seven years. I have lost 37, and the doctor says I'm doing it the right way, the healthy way. I am reconciled with my family, and my family didn't talk to me for about seven years, and during that time, they got saved. Praise God. Since then, I've been at The Rock, and I became a member. Praise God. I started serving in the FDC a few months ago, and I just love it. I've taken a short break, which I will explain in a minute. I went to the women's conference and volunteered to wrap s'mores, which was really fun. I went through breaking, some of you guys, some of you ladies remember that, okay? I went through breaking free, which was amazing. At this time, I was having back troubles, which God also healed me of. Praise God. I was told I had liver disease by my doctor, and I immediately went to God in the scriptures and claimed my healing, and God completely healed me. Praise God. I got I to gotta tell you this, too. Every time she says praise God, there's a smiley face. I forgot to add that, okay? And, and, and the reason I'm taking a short break from FTC is I started Bible college as a full-time student. Praise God. Big smiley face. I'm only taking a short break until I get the schedule down and studying, and then I will go back to FTC because I miss all the volunteers and especially the special people God sends who are hungry for food and the bread of life. Praise God. God has blessed me more than I have room for. I have love, peace, joy, friends, family, church family. I'm getting to know my sons well, one so far, but faith tells me the other too soon. I joined the intercessors group on Wednesday about a month ago or so, run by Loopy. Praise God. God. Uh, what a great group of intercessors the church has. I love every person I meet at the church. What a beautiful, loving, special family we have at The Rock. Bible college is amazing, and so are the instructors, the teachers, and the students. I, get ble I got blessed with a Prius car two weeks ago. Praise God. I got a new laptop for school. Praise God. I'm not sure how to use it yet, but I'm also getting a tutor who's going to help me with school. And my computer, thanks to The Rock, praise God. I just got a desk and a chair so I can study for school, praise God. And there's so much more that I would, it would take a book to fill it in on what God is doing in my life. About 12 years ago, there was a girl walking down the street, completely lost, talking to myself, digging through trash cans, homeless, in the gutters, gone in the mine, and look what the Lord has done. I'm sorry this is so sloppy. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm kind of jumping around, but I am just learning to write again and trying to express myself. Soon it will be much better because the Rock Bible College will help me. The reason I am writing this is I am so grateful to God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the pastors who are anointed, and the wonderful leaders, every one of them, shine the light of Jesus, and all the family in Christ at the rock, they all have the fruit of the Spirit. I wanted to tell you all how grateful I am, and I wanted to give you a praise report on all God has done in my life. So humbled to be part of such a wonderful family of God, and I want to tell you thank you for all you do, all the family at the rock, and the Inland Empire, and around the world. 
I am the least of all God's people and so grateful just to be alive and serving at the rock. I treasure you all in my heart and I love you all very much. I can't wait to see what more the Lord can do with me so I can serve God and you all better. If you don't mind, I will keep you posted with updates or more praise reports. Sherry, if you're listening tonight, I want them, all right? I look forward to getting to know you all better. Love you all so much, and I feel like I will just burst with joy. Big smiley face, your servant and sister in Christ, Sherry Pearson, with a cross and a heart, and it says, I love Jesus. <laughs> Sherry, I'm a wreck. But you know what? That's who we are. That's you. That's me. We were all a mess before Jesus, and now we have a great God in heaven that we serve. 28 years, Rock Church. Happy birthday. Loving people to life. We're going to continue. Listen, we're going to reach more people for Jesus. We're going to reach out into the Inland Empire. We're going to reach out into your communities. Why? Because you're reaching out. You are the full-time ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This church is just getting started. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, if you've got something from God, let's give the Lord a great big praise tonight. Hallelujah. May the Lord hear your call. May he answer your positions as you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.